For about two years, starting in 2016, all I thought about was getting my tiny hands on a gaming PC. Before then, I never realized how much better PC gaming was compared to consoles. I just assumed that consoles were the only place you could play actual games that weren't point and click adventures or hidden object games. Thankfully, YouTubers that I discovered like Rags and Bulletberry, through their videos, helped me understand what I was missing out on. In March of 2018, I finally obtained a gaming PC. We only had cash at the moment, so we decided to order from Walmart, and they did not have good part deals, so we had to buy a pre-built. Luckily, it was the day after Black Friday, and the HP 580-023W was going for $400. This was a killer deal, since it had a 7th gen i5-7400 and an NVIDIA GTX 1063GB. I still use this PC and it has served me well. I can play almost every modern game at max or close to max settings at 1080p 60fps, and some games I can even play at 4K. However, one issue I've noticed with this PC is poor air circulation in the case resulting in the GPU reaching the temperature limit in almost every game. For those that don't know, a GPU overheating is never a good thing. One being hot can result in damage and a shortened lifespan. So, to combat that, card manufacturers implement temperature limits where, once that limit has been reached, the card is downclocked. When it is downclocked, it is less powerful and thus lowers the temperature, but it can result in lower performance and stuttering. This isn't something specific to only my PC. Most budget pre-built and even some high-end pre built have this same issue, so today I'm going to examine it and find out how you can solve it. To monitor our frames and spec stats, we are going to need a special program called MSI Afterburner. This program will allow us to see our GPU and CPU temps and usage. As we open up the program, we see a lot of information. The only information we can use right now is that our GPU idle temp is averaging about 45 degrees and the core clock of the GPU is 1823 MHz. So without further ado, let's test out some games. We're starting with one of my favorite games of all time, Grand Theft Auto V. If we go into the settings, we can see that the settings are close to max. I've turned off all of the advanced settings to prevent maxing out the VRAM of the card as it only has 3 gigs of VRAM. The settings are directly imported from the GeForce Experience app, which gives you optimized settings for games depending on your spec sheet. But I lowered some of the settings to help the poor little 1060 out. As gameplay continues, you can see the game is playing just fine with 80 FPS average, with the GPU temp only maxing out at about 74 degrees Celsius. However, with a few minutes time, the GPU begins to hit 82 degrees Celsius, which is its temp limit. This begins to cause stuttering and lowers the frame rate a bit. Let's jump over to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game is notorious for its utilization of the GPU. This time I've added the core clock to the overlay so we can see if it changes. The settings I have are a variation of high, medium, and low settings. I changed the settings based on their VRAM usage. The game hits an average of 36 FPS, but the FPS varies completely based off the area you are in. However, the game never makes the GPU hit the temp limit, thus the core clock never changes.
So what can we do to fix this temp limit issue? For this video, we're going to see if maxing out the fan speed will allow for better airflow to the GPU and prevent it from being downclocked. I went into MSI Afterburner and set the fan curve to where the fan goes to 100% speed if the card hits 70 degrees Celsius or above. It's a bit overkill, but after off-screen testing, it was the best way to go. Let's try GTA 5 again with the new fan curve. The settings are all still the same, so don't worry about that. As gameplay continues, you can see that the temp never goes through the 80s, which is great. The core clock stays the same, meaning the GPU never gets downclocked. I was also going to test Just Cause 3 with the new fan curve, but it crashed every time in gameplay. Disabling the custom curve stopped the crashing. So that was it. Maxing the fan speed seemed to work, at least for this PC. In future videos in the series, I will try to find other ways to fix the issues and see if any of them work. Anyways, it's time to play the outro.